years ago, seven years ago, whenever this was. Yeah. It wasn't nearly as big. And I found this little webcam thing. And I was like, mm, this might be some money. So I text all my girlfriends. I think it was five of them. Text all five. Said, you're all coming here to live with me and work with me. None of them knew about each other. All, <laughs> bro, Tristan will tell you the story. He'll tell you. All five flew in. Picked them all up. They're all sitting there. I sat around the same table. <laughs> what? Bro, bro I need, listen, I need, to get, I need to get paid. Right? I'm broke now. I, I, I'm retired from fighting. I have no money. I'm running out of money. So I put them all around the same table. And I was like, look. We're going to start a webcam business. You're going to stay. You're going to live in London. I'm going to look after you. And we're going to get rich, rich. We're going to be a team. And they're all like, well, who's this bitch? I'm like, she's my girlfriend. She's my girlfriend. She's my girl. You're all my chicks. Oh. And you're going to stay here. And we're going to make some money. Big fight kicks off. Blah, 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 blah. In the end, long story short, three left, two stayed. Those are my first two girls. And we started this little webcam business from my apartment. And it just grew and grew and grew. And it got to the point where at one point I had 75 women working for me in four locations. Damn. And I was doing $600,000 a month from webcam. So this is in the UK. You this started is in the it, UK. Right? Uh -huh. This is in the UK. So, but this leads into the story of why I moved to Romania. So, mm -hmm. at the height of my webcam pimping, I think I'm the king of the world, right? I have all these women, da da da. But the problem is, my first two girls who worked for me worked for me because they loved me. Mm -hmm. I love this man. Right. I am with this man. We're a team. He's going to take me from the ghetto streets to the hotel suites, <laughs> right? So we're working. So we're working together. Yeah. But then once once you get bigger, you start hiring girls who don't love you. They're in it for the money. Mm -hmm. So I had a whole bunch of girls working for me who weren't really about it. And then I had one girl and she got too drunk one day and she threw up in my apartment. I told her to clean up. She refused to clean up. Start being an idiot. So I took her stuff throughout the window because it's like it's about that with women. You, I'm not, you never hit a girl, right? Can't yeah. do that. But if we if, learned that the hard way last yeah, week, yeah, 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 <laughs> you can't hit them. but if all the other girls see of me be disrespected, yeah. they're going to lose respect for me. Facts. Right. Yep. So when she's like, I ain't cleaning that up. You get that. So I was like, look, you're, I don't care. And she was my biggest earning girl. She made me on her own, maybe $25,000 a month. Oh, Damn. shit. So I didn't want to fire her. And she knew I didn't want to fire her, which is more reason why I had to fire her at. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was like, all right, cool. You want to be a gangster? Right, you're a gangster. Got her shit. Because we're like high up. We're like high up like here. It was just out the window. So throws <laughs> out the window. Got her by her two arms and marched her out the door. Locked the door. End of it. She starts texting me. Texting me, you owe me my last month's wages. You owe me my money. Give me my money. Did I text her back? I ain't paying you nothing. You threw up my blah, 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 blah. She went to the police. Oh, shit. And told the police I hit her when I didn't. Whoa. Uh, so it's five in the morning, and this is about four months later. Five in the morning, four months later, I'm laying in bed, and I heard the door, boom, 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 boom. And I don't know how I knew, I just knew it was police. The way they knocked that door. I was yeah. like, if you were gonna rob me, you'd kick the door in, or you, you this is just too obvious. And, and as soon as I heard that noise, I just paused for a second, I heard police. And I was like, ah, oh, man. <laughs> I was like, ah, but I didn't know what it was for, right? But I, I, there's a few things I can't say in the podcast. I've done, I've lived a varied life, right? I've done mm -hmm. some things when I had to pay the bills, right? So I was a bit like, ah, oh, what's this going to be? So I like flush my phone down the toilet quickly, boom! <laughs> this shit, I'm, I'm coming, I'm coming. So I'm trying to hide shit. I'm looking around. What do I have to hide? Do? Eventually, the door comes off the hinges. Boom! Police bust in. Yeah. Fully armored <laughs> helmet. Boom! The guy at the back had a clipboard of me. Standing there after one of my fights with a world title belt, and they and they sent like the the big man squad, like the oh, crazy yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. So all the officers were like six six. Yeah. The big boys came. Damn. They sent all they sent all the niggas to get you. Yeah. yeah. The British they sent the, the big boys. <laughs> I'm standing there like, okay, my little, it's like, so I was like, who are you? And they're like, you're under arrest for a suspicion of assault of this dumb hoe. And I'm like, I was like wait, this is dumb hoe. <laughs> they didn't, but I'm gonna protect her anonymity because I'm a nice guy. <laughs> Dumb hoe. 